All right, guys, let's get this haul video out of the way. Stuff's already piling up. It's just the middle of January. And usually, uh, I think I've cut these, you know, I've been wanting to cut these back to once a month, but it ain't going to happen. So, uh, first thing I got, I finally got a frame, okay? This frame is, I think, 27 by 24, the 27, uh, the 27 inches uh, really throws it off with what you can buy locally. And I found a place that had frames on sale, and I grabbed a few things. They were 50% off. Then I had a friend who had a smartphone, and they pulled up another uh, coupon, and they scanned the coupon around the smartphone. I'm still in the dark ages with a flip phone. Maybe time for me to convert. And I ended up getting this for 50% off. Then they were able to take another 40% off, which was just amazing. And now I finally have the poster that I've had for years framed. Let's see if we can get it all in there. Yes, my Alex Ross Flash Gordon movie poster is finally up. You just have no idea how satisfying that is. So we'll just put this over here. Okay, so the haul. Real quick, got this from a Goodwill. And one more VHS movie. This is Fox and Hound. Oh. And uh, I think this came out around 81. I've seen bits and pieces of it. I know people that absolutely love this movie. Uh, I've never really checked it out. And uh, I believe this is the one that Tim Burton uh, actually did some of the animation on. So there you go. All right. This was left over from Black Friday, which was back in November. I can't believe I found this. It was just piled up in some movies that Walmart had. And what was so funny is after I bought it, I started noticing in other places, and it's selling for $15 around here. I got it for $1.98, and it's the Batman Lego movie, which I am extremely happy to have found. found. I like the Lego movies. I really do, uh, which cracks me up. And uh, there's all the Lego villains. And apparently, you know, we have the Justice League in this and Robin as Lego creatures. Some little Superman there. And actually in the back, I used to have a ton of them. I think I'm down to like Boba Fett and a few that I want. I've got some Lego Star Wars figures from way back. I used to have a ton of them. And I'm actually looking forward to the Lego movie. I, I get a kick out of them with all the cameos and the humor. Found this for three bucks. All I need is a Road Warrior. I've had these movies before, sold them. I'm getting them all back. I think if I get Road Warrior, Beetlejuice, I'll be pretty happy. You know, they're, they're probably pretty easy to find. Red Dawn for three bucks, the original. Wolverines. Uh, Patrick made me a Patrick Swayze fan, man. Between Outsiders and Red Dawn, Swayze always got a pass for whatever he made and stuff. I mean, you know, solid, solid. This is a solid movie. So good, so good. Uh, Got this off eBay. It was originally a quarter. Got into a bidding war. Ended up paying a whole dollar for it. This is by Mashashi Tanaka. I think this came out, these came out in the 90s and they're always collected. It's the uh, Gone. This is three stories. Uh, he uses not, no dialogue. Uh, Gone is a 12-inch dinosaur who kind of just travels African plains. He ends up in uh, the Amazon River. I mean, he's just a little badass, and this is unique because it's got one laid-back story where he's just floating down the Amazon, and it's got another story that I've read, that's as far as I've read, where, uh, you know, he's in the African plains, and he jumps on top of a line, and he rides the line and breaks that bronco, man, snapping him with his tail, pissing off the line, and just breaking him like a bronco, so he can chase this gazelle so they can eat and it's just some amazing artwork um, let me see here's some pictures of the African Plains it's all pen and ink work that is just amazing um, and it's just one of the things where I could probably just shoot a whole video on this art just beautiful work all pen and ink um, there's a good picture of Gone some gray tones but uh, this one, he's just kind of floating down the Amazon River. You know, he ends up going down a uh, waterfall, lands in the water, messes around, gets adjusted to the water, and he finally starts relaxing. And all these animals and stuff just start uh, piling up on him. I love this picture. He gets covered up with frogs while he's floating down the river. And I could go on and on, but let me find one more page here, man. There's these piranhas that just beautiful beautiful work 
So check out Gone. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. They're easy to find. I got a library copy back there. I got for a quarter. This was a dollar off eBay. The one for a quarter came off Amazon. Just great little pen and ink work. All right. So I ended up going to town and ended up waiting around for somebody or something like that. And I kind of stepped into an antique shop. I was looking around and found some dollar books. Okay. So we got some Quasar. This is uh, number 30. And this is back when Greg Capullo was doing the work. A lot of people roll their eyes at Quasar. And here lately, you know, I've gotten quite a collection of them and enjoy them. I mean, I read probably the first 15 issues back when all this started in the 90s. And, uh, man, it's, it's actually really good, man. Uh, around, I don't know, 18 or 19, Mark Grunewald, up to that point, have just been using B characters and kind of cleaning up some continuities from loose ends uh, over, you know, you know, Marvel decades and whatnot. Uh, like I said, brought back a bunch of uh, B listers and has I had a cover by Todd McFarlane, had a cover by Jim Lee, had a cover by Mike Mignola. You know, nothing real serious. Just telling you know little stories, and then all of a sudden it's like he attacked a cosmic story. Greg Capullo came on, and Greg Capullo had a uh, style that was a real reminiscent of John Romita Jr. at the time, but it was tighter. Okay, it wasn't as sketchy. It wasn't bad. I mean, you know, it wasn't a blatant ripoff. And then, uh, as you know now, Scott Snyder ended up going to uh, Spawn and kind of aped McFarland's style. Now he's doing Batman with Scott Snyder, doing, just knocking it out of the ballpark. This is some of his earlier work. Okay, uh, number 36, you know, piece by piece. I think I've got over half this series now, just without even trying. Okay, got this. Um, back in the 90s, Marvel uh, more or less had a... Uh, crossover event I think it was X-Men Onslaught or something like that and what happened was is that they rebooted some of their books they got Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld to do them you know it was Captain America Avengers Incredible Hulk Iron Man Thor uh, Fantastic Four and this is a variant cover Jim Lee got on there with uh, Brandon Choi and they did uh, 13 issues of Fantastic Four and this is the variant variant cover for issue four, a holiday special. I got this for a buck, but I think it's probably worth three or four dollars. You know, Sue Storm being a bad girl there. You know. Okay, and then I was really glad to see this because I've been trying to piecemeal this storyline. Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis in the year 2000 came up with a story called Emperor Joker, and it ran into the reign of Emperor Joker. And basically, the Joker ends up getting the uh, powers of Mr. Mixias Pitalik. And just makes this backwards world. Bizarro shows up. A Bizarro Batman shows up. Everything's turned around. Batman's in a, or Superman's in asylum. Just great stuff, man. Just great stuff. And then I found this. This might be my second copy of this, but uh, you know, this is just great stuff. I need to pick up more of these. And looking at this bag, I don't know, man. It's got a barcode, actual barcode on it. So I might want to get it out of there. But you got a Hellraiser book uh, from the Marvel Epic line, if I remember right. Yep, this is number seventeen. Uh, I probably got about five or six issues of these, and they're not bad. They're not bad. I mean, they're definitely of their error, but uh, hor great horror books are great horror books. So, yeah. I think that's an Alex Ross cover. Early work. I'm not 100% sure. All right, and then I ended up at a used bookstore uh, during my time off from work. And, oh, oh, I'll show you this in a minute. Ended up finding these, the Big Book of Weirdos from Paradox Press. These are little strips, uh, one to three page stories of real people from history who were just considered weirdos, uh, like Vincent Van Gogh's in here and a lot of people I never heard of. But uh, they've got some really great artwork in here. Frank Quietly, this has some Frank Quietly uh, early work on there. It's got Nikola Tesla story on him, Hedy Green, Sarah Bernhardt, you know, people who just were just strange yet famous Rasputin yeah stuff like that so that's, that's pretty good that's the big book of weirdos I also have the big book of urban legends and they had the big book of criminals and they, they came up with quite a few of these and they're awesome to find I think I paid three or four dollars for both of these and then uh, I've got of course I've got my Berkeley Breed Tales to Ticklish the Tail uh, Bloom County you know Opus there this is a great 80's uh, comic strip that was in newspapers and a lot of political stuff in here that's real subversive, you know, uh, parodying them. Black and white. It's got the Sunday strips, and it's got the regular strips that were in the newspapers. 
Really great stuff. I love those. Got my collection going of those. And then I, forgot, I meant to show this months ago. I feel kind of silly having this. I actually donated money to help this wrestler get a replace his hip, and it just caught me on a soft spot one night. And in return, they, you know, if you donated so much, you know, if you donated just, you know, a certain amount, you got a signed autograph. If you donated more, you got a phone call. If you donated even more, you got a Skype conversation with them and all this stuff. So I ended up getting a signed picture of Scott Hall. So big shout out there to the great legend and Rorschach's journal. You guys are wrestling fans. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. I, it's kind of weird having it. So, you know, a signed picture of a man is just not my thing. Too much machismo coming out of here. All right, so then the local comic book shop had a 50 cent sale going on. I went down there and got all these. Um, and it's actually, you know, for what I paid, I'm actually going to be checking out some stuff I don't normally read. All right, I got this, and I absolutely love this book. I see what everybody's talking about with Daredevil. Uh, Mark Wade's Daredevil is spot on. This is a Halloween issue. Uh, he's got some back issues down there I can probably get for a dollar a piece and stuff, so I'm going to be getting that. Uh, number 32. In my opinion, that cover is very frameable. So let's go on down the line here. I got Detective here, number 26, Batman Story with Man Bat. And I'm a huge Man Bat. And look at this, a Marvel book. I got a Modern Age Marvel book, so I'm going to check this out, Superior Carnage. Uh, I asked the comic book shop owner, I said, what's the real feedback on this book? He's like, people's liked it. People have, people have liked it. So there's three. Number four, that's not a glare, that's the actual cover. If I don't like them, I'll put them on eBay. Oh, wait, did I get number five? Eh, well, I thought I had one through four, so who knows. Yeah, painted cover it looks like, or just a great colorist. Uh, 50 cents for a, this is a Batman 23.3 3D cover of the Penguin. That was cool to find for 50 cents. Um, I haven't paid full price for any of those 3D covers. Just as I got some Forever Evil tie-ins. I love Crime Syndicate, number nine. It was, you know, uh, Batman Superman, where they're doing a widescreen. This is number five. Uh, this whole book is done in widescreen. The first person I know that really did it that I ran across was John Byrne on a Fantastic Four issue back in the day. So it's kind of cool to see them come in there. And I know people didn't, a lot of people didn't like the first four issues and stuff, but I like Greg Pak's writing, so I'm hanging in there with him. So uh, this could be cool. Looks like there's Nightwing in there. What do we got here? Then we got Justice League number five. Just getting some Justice League of America number five. Um, number 25, I've been picking up these Justice Leagues for 50 cents. I'm, I've got quite a collection. I owned the first 13 of them twice so far and sold them. Uh, got this, just to kind of, I'm just curious because it's Jason Aaron and Ed, Ed uh, McGinnis. Amazing X-Men number one, got this for 50 cents. I think this is supposed to be the return of Nightcrawler. And, man, he had tons and tons of X-Men books and uncanny avengers books and all that stuff and i did not know where to start and even he said it was a mess you know nobody's can, nobody can follow what's needed so i, I grabbed that one all right then i got me some valiant books finally man eternal warrior number one for 50 cents all right and it's got greg pack writing it I, i'm really big on his stuff here man uh, i didn't really notice greg pack until he did planet planet hulk which i thought was phenomenal and world war hulk and then Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis came on. They act like it never happened. Uh, ended up actually getting some of these. Shadow Man number four. Uh, actually picked up two copies. Uh, looks like Master Dark is back here in issue five. And of course we have a phone call. Hello. Yeah, here in a little bit. Yeah. So, alright, bye. And, and we're back!
right, I'll have to edit now. Anyway. What's up out there, guys? Yeah. Issue 5 looks like Master Dark is back. Uh, I collected, I got tons of Valiant. I think Valiant was awesome in the Jim Shooter years when he was running it and the quality really declined. Number 7. I've been hearing a lot of great things about this. Now, I left Harbinger behind and uh, one issue of Exo Man of War because I already have a few of those. Still haven't got around to reading them. Number 8. Love that cover. That harkens back to the original symbol of Shadow Man. His symbol was a shadowy figure in a doorway. So, I caught that real quick about what they did there. I was like, oh, I see what you did there. It's called a callback, you know, a little homage. I think this is a Halloween issue, number 11. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to read that one. And then I've really been running across a lot of these books. I need to get them bagged and stuff. Um, BPRD, uh, a lot of these have got to do with Hell on Earth. Uh, it's a bunch of... Uh, Ser mini series within a series uh, BPRD Hellboy quit the BPRD and then the book just went like wow like these guys had to start finding ways to beat these monsters and stuff without Hellboy and it ended up really really making the book feel dangerous and have a lot of tension and stuff and they you know not saying they're struggling but they're definitely working harder so I got a lot of these this issue well, these aren't in order issue 111 um, so, just great, great stuff from the Hellboy universe. Yep. Great stuff. I'm not going to try to read off the issue numbers because not all of them has an issue number. There's 109. Earth is cracked. Okay, some of these might be doubles, but he'll let me take them back and put them back in there. 104. Exorcism, that's the one I think I might already have. This is a, what is this? Two of two. Two-part story. The Dead Remembered really like that cover it looks like it almost looks like the guy that might be doing lock and key covers I don't know it's got that same perspective Russia something all hell's breaking loose in Russia yeah just great stuff great stuff more of the dead remembered and a lobster Johnson this was a two-parter and I need part two this is part one the scent of Lotus lobster Josh Johnson is a it's, it mixes a cult with that pulp uh, hero feel of the 30s and 40s and stuff. You know, when he punches you, or not punches you, but, you know, he does something to you where he'll leave the claw burned into your skin or something like that. And they give you the idea that, you know, there's some occult to him, maybe. You know, so it's great stuff. Spy Smasher, The Phantom, Mandrick, the, the Magician, The Shadow, those kind of guys. And then I got this. I went back and forth on buying this, right? Because, you know, I'm so cheap, I squeak when I walk. But I got this. I got this at a Barnes & Noble, and the thing was on sale. And I was like, how can I not do it? Because uh, I may be on Roger 69501. I might actually get the numbers right. He does the Phantom Zone. He started doing Google Chats and stuff. I think he got a new camera. And he had the great legend on last week, or earlier, yeah, last week. And then they talked Superman and stuff. So, I, you know, I figured I'd get this. The Essential Superman Encyclopedia. It's hardback. It's thick. And I really enjoy it. It comes with a pull-out poster. And basically this thing is just balls to the wall. Um, balls to the wall information, right? Like on Lex Luthor. Okay. There's Alexander Luthor. This thing is alphabetical. It's just a bunch of characters from Superman over the years. But like there's Alexander Luthor. Then over here. All right. There, we start reading about Lex Luthor, right? But, look at this. Okay? One, two pages. Three, four pages. Five, six pages. Seven, eight pages. nine point two five pages of Lex Luthor history and you know and then some people get like a little nod like a little paragraph but just depending on what's gone on with them um, you go through here and it's it's so far it's been pretty accurate pretty thorough I usually rip these things apart you get a big history of the Daily Planet you get a history of the Legion of Superheroes you get I mean just minor minor characters the Mountain of Judgment 
uh, Justin Moore, Tim Moore, I mean just people you just never thought of, Mixoplick, just anything and everything. Even and, you know, and we even have some Poison Ivy in here, uh, a Batman villain. So you know, I can go through this and stuff. It's got it's got a little color section there. It uh it has some pictures. Oh, I'm moving the camera. I never do that. Shake, shake, shake. All right, so you know, has some great you know, Batman uh, Superman number fifty cover. Uh, Adam Kubert cover. It looks like. Andy, Adam, who knows? Okay, we got the Superman family of the Silver Age, and then we get the Superman family of the pre-52 age. Alex Ross Crypto, with a Silver Age uh, appearance of Crypto, you know. So it's just a great little book, hardback. And I've ended up reading this and enjoying this so far. You know, it's not just, uh, you know, bathroom reading. All right, that's my haul. Thanks for hanging in there. Get a little editing to do and get this thing up. All right, have a great week.